the Rolex 24 at Daytona, and the number one in this race sees the green flag first. Let's go racing in 2022 here at the World Center of Racing. Brilliant start there by Albuquerque, really controlling the pace there. Big deep breaking maneuver by the second car on the screen. That's the black and gold Mustang sampling Tristan Bardier of the LMP3 and LMP2 cars trying to negotiate the, the first couple of corners. Split start to keep the GTD cars away from the prototypes, give them some breathing room so they can race fairly down into turn one. And the five gets a great run right here coming into turn four, going to take the lead. We saw them be very aggressive at the get-go, pretty surprising early in this 24-hour event. Yeah, and their car was really in the sweet spot last weekend. Richard Westbrook has been drafted into that squad for this season, really did an amazing job putting the pressure on Ricky Taylor. But here comes Kamui Kobayashi. Albuquerque is backing up in these early laps, has to give it up there, otherwise they would have touched. This is the Japanese. Talented new race car drivers are all about grit, determination, but is that maybe the best example we've seen of that recently of someone who said, hey, I'm not pet box, okay? It is chilly here, Junior, come on! <laughs> so, you can see the Ally 48 uh, out in front with Kamui Kobayashi. This is how he got this car to the lead of this race. Watch these slick moves. He was decisive. Well, middle of the screen there, you see the black leader there, Tristan Vautier, about that Cadillac, and to the inside, you see the pink and white machine. But watch this move here. So decisive. We talked about... Drove this car up into the second place there. You see Kobayashi coming through NASCAR 3 and 4. His best lap of the day is about half a second clear of the rest of the field. He is flying. One of his teammates told me yesterday, I won't name which one, this guy doesn't even need it. Well, you're coming to pit road, Albuquerque. Kobayashi, Kobayashi, yeah. Kobayashi brings the Ally 48 Cadillac in first. They assume the lead, the Cadillac racing. This will be a big factor. What sort of pace were you able to run? Were you able to save any fuel? Do a little bit shorter fuel fill here. They're going to be concerned. Up to temperature. You see this stack of Michelin's in the sun. Genius idea. Get as much ambient temperature as possible. Cal, when that sun goes down, the crew chief in me. I love this sun idea. I don't have any options in the evening field season from snowy New York. We'll see you at 4 Eastern on USA Network, but up next, continuing on Peacock. Awake and alert. You guys spoke about traffic. <laughs> Check this out. Look at this pack of cars. you got some prototypes in there as well, trying to get up to speed, but we're going to suppress. Then we had a little bit of action down here into turn one, the Ferrari getting spun around, a little bit of decision making by the drivers behind. No harm, no foul. Everyone gets through, but that was not the case here with the Lexus as the another Ferrari goes around, releases the brake, and unfortunately, Franti Monticalvo, nowhere to go. Ferrari, I think, didn't realize there's another car there, released those brakes, as you said, Hinge. Major damage through the head, and there was some pretty spirited battles. There's a Sebastian Bourdais in the 01 Ganassi car hitting. Not too much damage there, but it was a sketchy period for Lopez, who almost crashed the car after coming out from a pit stop. Yeah, coming into turn six there, just gets in a little five is the West Horseshoe. Definitely coming in a little hot behind him. It's, man, it's so tough to tell. I don't think there was contact. I think though. he just got on the throttle. Yeah, it's hard. The smart number with a blue background, and the blue background indicates the LMP2 class. All the classes have different color number panels white and orange for LMP3, red and white for GTD Pro, red and green for GTD, and black and white for the DPI leading class. So if you look at the prototypes and look a bit similar, that's a good way to tell them apart in the GTD class. Go 48! Fella getting back into his position and getting back into pit lane. Tell us more, Marty. Yeah, Mike Rock and Bella Cool in the 48 car. And that caution. But Chad Canals made the call here was to do number one. They took the wave around. That put them back on. Planned on talking to us. Excited to see him. Elio take the lead. Car looked great. Flat left rear tire. We talk about 24. Get our lap back. We'll stay out and get the wave by. And here we go again. So we've gone down at least one lap. To do it. He is, without a doubt, the youngest 46-year-old I have ever seen. Oh, this right here. Oh, big yellow. Force course yellow right here. That he could join us here. And now trouble for the Mueller Motorsports number six, as it has heavy damage on track as well. I'm not sure how that one happened, James, because we cautioned for the 23 out Oh, my goodness. And the 75 I said, how's everything going? He said, good so far. Will Stevens had done an outstanding lap right rear tire for Will Stevens in the 10 car. And there was a spin. That's how all that got going. He had been doing a terrific job to that point, sitting second in DPI. A lot of driver changes will happen, including Jimmy Johnson. Who
Jemai! 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 The timing of the pit stop there, 31 seconds. That's not a lot of time, Hitch, to get that all done. It wasn't, and I love that we stayed on that camera to see lane that has claimed so many cars over the years. I think the interesting thing is... Come on, Jimmy! Don't don't disappress the Hendrick fans. And Jimmy Johnson fans, supporting Jimmy right now. Go 48! Entirely sure what happened. I'm not sure another car was close enough to him, but that's a weird place to lose the back end of the car. And I, I think he is. Well, he's in the 96 right now, but it literally spun. Almost hit us on the pit wall. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. The team bears some responsibility on this as well. And I way back, so it, he can hold on until they get back to green. That's when uh, he's ready to get a nap for sure before he gets in here in a little while. What a stint. Your first time in the world flat spot. I mean, maybe he's just still pressing. He hasn't been in the car in these conditions. So, and again, release, release, release the brake. They didn't lock him very long. That's the problems for one of the prototypes. Jimmy Johnson in the 48 Action Express. No! GTD, 15 Mercedes, just a moment ago and is looping his way back to pit lane after a run through the ground. Turn two, they get together, and I don't know who hit who, but obviously the two cars made contact, and it's more than just a cut down tire, it is suspension damage for the 48, Jimmy Johnson. So she'll have more than any American Alpine skier in history. And she his way back to pit lane. Yeah. Just approaching sunset, and it was the Sun Energy One Mercedes who was taken out of the race. Near a spin by the 10 car. We'll step back into it. This is crazy here. Going to a restart there. Alex Lynn keeps kind of to and throwing on the brake. Alex Lynn actually got a penalty for that. And then a spin. Sorts of trouble. Hit by the 15 car at one point. Three behind the lesion of laps. However, it went away. Leading contenders in DPI. The Often that we have a Rolex 24 where we and this is Tristan Vautier colliding with the 31. Pets for new tyres, still there for the tyre temperature. Big moment tries to hang on to. But if you can just hang on in there and prevail, you'll be there at the end. And it was the defending champion, Colin Kamenolta, Wayne Taylor Racing Car, that saw that green flag first. Yeah, big jump there from the control early in the going. Big incident here. White mirror and a ball than an under 18 LMP2. Ricky Taylor looks to be a couple of tenths quicker on the clear lap than Elio does. LMP2 battle, look at this. Colton and Erda down to the inside. Oh, and that caused Della. And Della tries to go through his mid 40s. For Maya Shank Racing, the new team as this GTD Pro battle rages down into the Le Mans chicane. And they go through the grass and spins. Goes to two. Oh, Lawrence Vantor. There's the Ferrari. The Ferrari goes by for second. This is it for Elio Castro Neves and Maya Shank. Tom Blomkis did such an amazing job. Ollie Jarvis and Simon Pagano, the teammates from IndyCar. But Elio Castro Neves, Maya Shank Racing, they won the 50th edition. They're going to win the 60th edition as well. Incredible. Wayne Taylor Racing comes home second. And the fat Porsche will grab that GTD Pro win in one of the most toughest fought races you've seen for the right motorsport Porsche. They take home GTD with Jan Halen. Mike Shank celebrates and Colton Herder is going to take the Dragon Speed LMP2 car to Victory Lane. Of the drivers in this car, Colton Herder and Pato Award are now two-time class winners of the Rolex 24 as Dragon Speed wins LMP2. Miley Motorsports will do it again. Back-to-back -back victories in this 74 Ranch Resort LMP3 prototype. Could we have asked for any more? You know, is it tears for the for the two? Race, great celebration. Marty, uh, Team Jim Meyer, the call. Can you believe this and enjoy this last May when Spider-Man returned to the Speedway? Mate Simon Pagenaud gets his first overall. There he
goes. A bit more banking here, Lee. <laughs> and his teammates are going with him.